Nobody could talk to him. When he gets angry, he He grew like that. Powerful in the anointing. Powerful in grace. And when he started airing, nobody could challenge him. A time came, the only, the only thing he had to do to save his marriage was say, I am sorry to his wife. He said his wife is not trained. That, that how is she expecting him to tell her she's not trained? All of the elders were disappointed. That a man of God. And meanwhile, there were evidences that revealed that he needed to say sorry. All the wife was waiting for was he felt offended that the wife was insisting. Do you know me? Are you aware of If I were him, I would have, I would have used comedy to say sorry. <laughs> when my wife delivered, I went to preach. I preached for how many days? Seventeen days. Because I told the Eastern people I would come. So when I came home, she was angry. I knelt down. If you see the way I knelt down, you yourself, you. But just I knelt down. I say, hey, this thing now. <laughs> And free yourself. So she said, ah, I'm not too big. If I offend you, I will kneel down. You will be amazed. Because what is it? What is it? What is it? What are you talking about? There, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing spectacular about me. Just one thing is called grace. And I know myself when there was no grace. That picture is very clear. That's why in D David, God had to be reminding him of when he took him from the sheep coat. Eh? God doesn't need to remind me. I carried the two pictures. Yes. That we are nothing. But it's the grace of God that makes us what we are. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. You know why? I've invested in that home. If there's anything that will affect the investment that is dependent on me, it's solved. It is done. But you see, that man of God never knew that that pride he had in his vessel was going to cost him his home. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. If you cannot keep your home, I will never listen to you again. Never. Because your first disciple is supposed to be your wife. If your wife does not believe in you, I will not believe in you. I'm not talking about a wife that left you and became an unbeliever. A wife that is still a believer and he left you. If she does not believe, she, she knows you to the bedroom, to the bathroom, to the wardrobe, to, and she came out and said, Hey! I will not believe. It means you have not represented God effectively in the life of that woman. So what are you preaching to the world? Are you with me? So take an axe, an arrow. Eh? Look for that flesh and take it for a surgery. Keep praying about it until it loses its authority over your soul. That is the way of Christianity. And those days, this was how we were taught. That was why. Oh, you, you didn't see me as a proud man. Oh, you are just coming. I come from a long line of pride, proud people. Then I knew that pride and revelation don't work together. Because revelation has the capacity to puff, puff up. Eh? I saw that from the Bible. So I had to take 
for what? Somebody traveled from Lagos and came expecting that maybe when they see me, I'm a big man of God. We are with. Now came and. And the person was disappointed. This is not the type I want. I will not change because of that person. Eh? Because I know that the Spirit of God is against pride. Exactly. I know the what of the grace of God. When I'm begging God in the place of prayer, sometimes eight hours before I come out, when I'm begging him for grace and the grace has not come, I know that if I get angry and go out, I will only be a laughing stock. So I know the difference between when a man has grace from God and when that grace is not yet there. I know the difference. So I can stay there for 11 hours. But if it comes, that's when I start wearing my suit and singing. <laughs> if he comes, if he comes. Ooh. Went to worry to preach. I didn't know the witches came to visit me. But the grace came. And the first one that stood up was embarrassed. Then the others, they were arrested. And I was using them for lecture. This type, because Jesus said, this kind goeth not. He's talking about the types of demons and their operation. Oh, tell me, how can you teach about types of demons if, if it's not in a practical place when you have authority to bind them? So Jesus had practical lessons. It was because the, uh, the grace was there. The pastor was afraid. The pastor that invited me was afraid. Seriously afraid. He never knew that he was pastor. The people he was pastor, he didn't know them. I know when there is no grace. And I will not come out. But if I come out, it means grace came. Whether I was a stammerer before, if I come out, what will speak through my vocal cord? You have never heard it before. That's what is called spirit life. When God gives you a spirit platform to stand and the spirit of God swallows up all your infirmity and he gives you a strength that you do not have in the flesh. If you have ever known the Holy Ghost and walked in his strength, you will curse the flesh anytime you see it. Hmm. Oh. I don't know about you. God has given me strange instructions before. Strange. Strange. There was a day he woke me up in my house. I used to stay in Wadata then. He said, begin to walk on the road. I'm sending you to somebody. Move left. Move right. Right again. Then I met, I met the person. I used to do those things before. Those were the days he was teaching me navigation. If you know the life of the spirit, you will not accept the flesh. The flesh is, is cause is falling. Take a chisel, take it to God, ask Him to cut it off. Let that pride die. Let it lose authority over your soul. When He wants to rise, after God has dealt with it, you can say, Kai! No more. Because He doesn't have authority over you. You can tell that loss, No, I'm in charge. When God deals with it, when he rises, it won't have control. You can tell it, go back. Those were the labors of spiritual men in those days. They hated the flesh with passion. And if you hear their stories, it's as if they were not human. There was no falling expression. Men like Ranhard Bonke. Men like Paelte. There was no downtime. The flesh had been dealt with. And all that was left was a vessel that God could possess to minister and to bless a generation. And when I looked at their lives, studied Christianity for many years, the ancient men like Murray, Andrew Murray, men like E.M. Bounds, 
and their testimonies of how they walk with Jesus I knew there was no option for me the flesh must be paralyzed the flesh must be stripped of its authority because the way of Christ is a way of no flesh but all spirit for there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ they do not walk after the flesh they've given out all the appendages of the flesh and the Lord has mutilated them he has sent them on paralysis now the Holy Spirit has free cause he can flow through their laughter he can flow through their song he can flow through their preaching he can flow through their admonition every outlet becomes a window through which the Holy Spirit can do his good work such men when the devil looks at them he, he will bring money and entice them and that which would have responded to money the Holy Spirit had dealt with it he will bring women and entice them that which would have responded to, we, to women it has been paralyzed have you seen a man paralyzed before he desires to walk but his legs can't what can carry him mm. that's how you become when you allow him to deal with the flesh the devil will bring products to see if there's any compatibility with your soul so that he can begin to regulate you but he will show the product there's there's no compatibility how many of you have seen a remote control samsung remote cannot change the channel of lg no compatibility so when satan brings products he doesn't find compatibility because these men are all together sold out to the spirit of god they walk not after the flesh but after the spirit when you begin to walk after the spirit you begin to find what spirit life is about how spirit life is oh it's a wonder it's a wonder I know I am a stammerer but when the Holy Ghost comes when he comes when he comes I preached the sermon a young man had to hear it how many times did he hear it it's, it's not a man's voice he's hearing there's something mingled with that utterance that is not a voice or it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing Jesus said the words that I speak they are containers to convey spirit then a vessel begins to rise they test you with money your integrity your love for Jesus is stronger than money he, he leaves you there for five years to, to, so that you will go through the season and you didn't take what was not yours so now I'll give you a set out world and it's not about your certificate whether you graduated as an engineer that's when you will know that the real things that make men mighty they are allocations they are keys from the kingdom which is in heaven that God gives to men oh my oh my oh my it doesn't matter whether you were privileged to go to the university can you be fit? Yeah. see the vision I saw a pastor was supposed to this oil well was supposed to sponsor his ministry but he was not obedient to God enough it means the way of the flesh distracted him the best things of God will never go to a man of flesh 